Formed elements. I want you to start with a learning check. What are the three main types of formed elements in the blood? You saw the previous video. All right, hopefully you got these here. I've shown here the three main types are going to be the ones that circle. So erythrocytes or red blood cells, platelets, which are not whole cells. That's why this is called formed elements. And then the leukocytes overall, so white blood cells. And here are a couple different kinds of leukocytes shown. So those are the three main types. Talk about them a little bit generally here, how they're produced, and then I'll have videos on them separately as well. So um, you can just, from this view, and you've seen this before in, in lab, they have different structures and different sizes, shapes, morph morphology. So red blood cells are pretty darn simple. Um, they're small compared to your average cell, and that is partly because they don't have a nucleus or any really other cell material. Um, <clears throat> you can actually see kind of a circle in the middle here, a blank space. They're kind of concave. We'll see that in a little bit. Um, leukocytes are bigger than red blood cells. They have a nucleus, sometimes more than one. They have other stuff in them. So this is granules in here. Um, and here is the nucleus. The nucleus stains purple with this, the dye that is used here, whereas the cytoplasm stains pink. Lastly, we've got platelets, really tiny. So you saw these in lab. Um, you had to kind of look in between the red blood cells for just little dots, little pieces of cells that are floating around in between the red blood cells. And then this relates to the function of each, right? I've already briefly talked about the function of each of these um, gas transport, which gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide, um, immune function for leukocytes. They are gonna have products in them to allow them to take in, break down foreign material and nuclei that allow them to produce stuff as needed, live longer, learn, um, what things are foreign and what things are not foreign. And platelets will be, they're kind of all around the place. Um, they're gonna be involved in blood clotting. We'll come back to that. So all of these cells are formed new all the time. Unlike your brain cells, most neurons don't, are not made in adulthood. Um, blood cells, all of them are constantly made. This starts in childhood, in beginning even at the yolk sac of an embryo, and continues in the fetus in various organs, a lot of lymphatic organs, so spleen, um, lymphatic tissue. Eventually, it's going to switch all to the red bone marrow. So pretty much after birth and in children and throughout adulthood, this hematopoiesis, which refers to the formation of blood cells, is going to occur in the red bone marrow, which you also may remember is distributed differently in children, fetuses versus um, children and adults. So it does get less prevalent as humans grow older. But it's there's some present in all um, humans and in the red, red bone marrow, this is where blood cells are produced. You do not need to know every step of this pathway, all these things. I like this figure because it shows every cell type, every for, type of formed element. Um, a lot of the figures, including, I believe the ones in your book, show them separately, which is fine. Um, but I like that this shows the white blood cells as well as the platelets and red blood cells all in one figure. They all form from the same progenitor cells, um, which are these, um, hemocystoblasts. These are also called, um, I believe I have this, I'll write this down. These are also called hematopoietic stem cells. Same thing. This is actually the term, um, your book uses both. I believe this is the term I have in your learning outcomes. Um, blasts, remember, are immature cells. Stem cells are cells that can um, produce 
divide and produce other cells. So again, you don't need to know all these details, but these are all going to become blasts at some point. So see all these blasts. They're going to differentiate, develop, different genes will be expressed and they will um, differentiate into different white blood cells up here. That's all the detail you need to know. Or they will dif differentiate into megakaryocytes which then bust apart into platelets. Little pieces of them fall off and become these little platelet chunks, megakaryocytes, pretty cool. And then lastly, you've got the uh, erythroblast that ejects its nucleus, becomes a reticulocyte, and then it becomes a mature red blood cell erythrocyte. And that's unique, right? Ejecting a nucleus, most cells don't do that. So, most of these terms are not on your key terms, right? Most of these lymphoblast, monoblast, myoblast, that's not part of this class. Um, the other thing I wanna show, tell you on this slide is basically every single one of these steps, developmental steps is going to be stimulated or, and or inhibited um, by cytokines. So you may have heard of cytokines. They're associated with the immune system in terms of inflammation. Some of them are anti-inflammatory though. Um, and they also are gonna be important for regulating this pathway. Basically every single one of these steps is regulated by different types of cytokines. That's all you need to know about that. Lastly, erythropoietin is another um, stimulator of red blood cells. So you may have heard of EPO, EPO is the abbreviation for erythropoietin. It stimulates the development of red blood cells specifically from their stem cells. And this is exactly why erythropoietin, it's a glycoprotein hormone, it's because in the blood, it's traveling throughout the blood, um, secreted by the kidneys actually, and people will take it to be as performance enhancing um, drug it's as a drug if you take it, right? Because it results in increased red blood cell production. And so then your body can produce more red blood cells and you can exercise better. So that is not allowed in most sports. Um, however, going to high altitude is, right? And that's another way to incre increase red blood cell production because there's low oxygen. And so your body responds by making more blood, red blood cells. We'll come back to that actually in um, respiratory system, body's adaptation to high altitude.